Okay, so let's talk about how to read a micrometer. And probably the first thing that you want to know about your micrometer is the scale that the micrometer measures in. And some micrometers measure in inches, others measure in metric units or millimeters. So the first thing you should do is check out the frame, and I'm gonna go ahead and outline that part right here. And we're gonna talk about the different parts of the micrometer in just a minute. But basically what I'm outlining here is generally considered the frame of the micrometer. And on the frame, usually what you will see is two things. One will tell you um, the length of which you can measure an object. In other words, for this particular micrometer, we see zero to one inches. So that means that it can measure any object that is zero to one inches in length. And then the other thing you wanna know is the precision of that measurement that you can take. And you'll see that this micrometer, I'll write it out over here, will measure to 0 0.001 inches or 1 1,000th of an inch, which is a much more precise measurement than you could obtain using, say, a ruler. So let's take a look at the different parts of the micrometer. Uh, the bottom of the micrometer um, we discussed a minute ago, which is the frame, and I'm outlining it again for you. Now you'll notice in this particular case, this is just a picture obviously I snipped from the internet, it doesn't show what scale this micrometer uses uh, or the length of an object that it can measure. But if you take a look over at the scale to the right on the uh, sleeve and the thimble, you can tell from there that this is actually measuring in millimeters. Now the scales we're gonna look at will be in inches because primarily machinists, um, auto technicians and engineers uh, use the English scale or inches. So that's what we will use in just a minute. But um, let's look at the other parts. So you've got an anvil and a spindle, and then the measuring faces in between, which is where obviously you would put whatever object you're measuring. You've got a lock to hold it in place so it doesn't slide on you and you get an accurate measurement. And then you've got actually three scales on this particular micrometer. You have the sleeve that has the bottom scale and a top scale or a vernier scale, and then you have your thimble scale. Now, some micrometers don't have the vernier scale, but if you are a machinist, you're going to want that scale because it gives you a more precise reading. Auto technicians don't usually need the vernier scale, but you might run into it at some point. So it's good to learn how to read all of the scales on the micrometer. So let's take a look at a micrometer that just has a barrel scale and a thimble scale. We're gonna start with the barrel. Now on the barrel, there actually are two numbers that you're gonna read off. There is a scale along the top that starts at zero. And in this instance, we could see all the way up to the number seven. And the distance between each one of those numbers is 0.1 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an IN there just to remind us that we are in inches. And so each one of those numbers represents 0.1 inches. And so if I look at the barrel scale, just that top scale, and I say, what is the distance that I'm measuring there? The last number, the largest number I can see is a seven. And of course, since it's in tenths of an inch, that would be seven tenths or 0.7. And that's where the first number down here in our um, addition problem came from. That's where the 0.7 came from. It came off the barrel. Now, there's a bottom scale also, and you can see that that scale is marked that it measured to 0 0.025 of an inch or 1 40th of an inch. So each one of those small lines, when I move from one small line to the next, I'm traveling 0 0.025 inches. So if I want to read the bottom scale in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to that seven, the largest number that I can see that I've recorded on my paper. And then I'm gonna say, how many of those small lines beyond the seven can I see? And in this case, I can just see one. So that means I need to add on 0 0.025 which is where that second number came from. Now, if there were two lines beyond that, you can think of it like money. 25 and 25 would be 50. So if there were two lines visible beyond the seven, I would have written 0 .050. And if I could see three lines beyond the seven, 
then that would be 0 0.075. And obviously, if I could see the next line, that would actually be at 8, so I would have used 0 0.8 instead of 0 0.7. So the first two numbers that you record are going to come off the barrel. The first one will be the top scale, and that, that'll be to a tenth of an inch. And the second one will come off the bottom scale, and that'll be to a fortieth of an inch. But you, that scale you should think of like money, 25, 50, 75, okay? So that's where the first two numbers came from. Now, the last number, that 0 0.016, that's going to come off the thimble. So what you're going to do is you're going to look over to the scale on the thimble, and you can see two numbers showing up right now, a 15 and a 20. And the question is, somewhere between 15 and 20, we think we're going to pull a number. How do we know which number to choose? Well, we go back to the barrel and we look at that line, that horizontal line coming across off the barrel that touches the thimble. And we say, which line on the thimble does it match up with the closest? Well, 15 is below it. And it looks like the line that actually matches up with it would be then 16. Obviously, the next line is 17 and then 18, 19, and 20. So that's where the 16 came from, but you have to remember this now goes out to a thousandth of an inch, the thimble scale does. So when you add that number in, you're gonna record it as 0 0.016, and that's where that third number in our addition problem came from. And so then, of course, if we take those three numbers and we add them up, we get 0.741, and again, I'm going to put an IN after that because we should include the units. They are inches. And just to be clear, both the thimble scale and the bottom scale on the barrel go out to a thousandth of an inch. What that thimble scale does is it gives you a more accurate reading for that last place. Okay, so that 0.025 that's for the line, the one line we can see beyond the seven, but then we can see there's a little bit of space between that line and the actual barrel, and it's that little space that is the 0 0.016 that we add in so that we get a more precise reading out to a thousandth of an inch. Okay, let's take a look at another example, and this one, as you can see, has that vernier scale. So we're going to actually get an even more precise reading from this particular micrometer. And if you look along the frame, you'll see that it does have that zero to one inches, and it tells you how precise a measurement I can get. And you'll notice in this case, it goes all the way out to a 10,000th of an inch. And especially for a machinist, that's gonna be important to have that extra scale, that extra precision in your measurements. So let's take a look at this. We'll start with the reading the number off of the barrel or the sleeve, and we'll say, what's the largest number that we can see the entire number? I can see the one, I can see a part of the two, but I can't see the whole thing. So I'm actually gonna start with a one. So I'm gonna have point 0.1 to get started with this reading. And then I'm gonna count how many lines beyond that one I can see. Well, I can see one, two, three lines beyond, so that's going to be point. Now, remember, you always put a zero first, and then three lines would be like 75 cents, so point zero seven five is what I'm going to add on, and I'll go ahead and fill in my zeros up above. And now, we're going to go over to the thimble, and we're going to say, okay, I've got my line coming across on my sleeve. Where does it hit the thimble? And you'll notice that it looks like it's between the 14 and the 15. So which one do I choose? You can never choose a number that is above the line coming off the sleeve. I have to choose the one below. So that number below is 14. So I'm going to record that as 0 0.014. And then I'm going to go to this last scale, the Vernier scale and I've got lines coming across. You'll notice I have 10 lines coming across there. And so what, which one of those lines do I choose? Well, I'm gonna choose the line off of the Vernier scale that matches up most closely with the line off of the uh, thimble scale. And so if I take a look at that, it looks to me, and you can see if you agree with me, but I think it looks like the best matchup is right there where I've highlighted in blue, and that looks like it corresponds to a six. So all I'm gonna do is I know that's the 10,000th of an inch, so I'm just gonna tack that on to my thimble reading. 
And now I'm ready to go ahead and add up my numbers. So I'm gonna have a six, five and four is nine, seven and one is eight, obviously, and then one plus zero is one. So I'm looking at 0.1896, and that is in inches. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. And this one is maybe a little bit trickier because when I look at the numbers on the barrel, it might you might not be 100% sure whether or not you should say you can see the whole three. I am gonna use the three, so I'm gonna start with point three zero zero now how do i know for sure that it's okay to use the three well first of all it looks like i can actually see the line right at the three so that would put me at 100 if i was talking about dollars you know 25 50 75 that would be 100. Um, but also when i look over on the thimble scale you'll notice that the line at zero which would have been exactly at three if that had been lined up um, we would have said 0 .300 and we would have been done. But we're actually a little bit above that line. Now we're not all the way to the one, you'll notice we're not all the way to the one. So we don't get to use the one, we have to just leave it at zero when we go to add on. So it may seem kind of silly, but I'm actually gonna add in 0 .000 but I actually am a little bit beyond that zero line. How much beyond that am I? That's where the vernier scale comes into play. So now I'm gonna look at these numbers over here and say which line lines up best from the vernier scale. Let me write that out. Oh, it's hard to read my sloppy writing. Um, which uh, number on the vernier scale lines up best with my thimble scale? And to me, it looks like, you can see if you agree with me, the seven lines up the best. So I'm gonna tack a seven on here, and I'm gonna say that my final answer is, if I add, drum roll, I'm gonna get 0 .3007 inches. That's gonna be my final answer. Okay, last example. Let's take a look at our scale. The largest number I can see on the sleeve of the barrel is a six, so I'm gonna start with point six zero zero then i'm going to say well how many lines beyond the six can i see well i can't see any so i'm actually just going to add on point zero 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 and then i'm going to come over to my thimble scale and i see the number 20 right there and my line is clearly coming off the barrel above the 20. it's also above the 21 but it's not above the 22. So 21 is the largest number I can use, so I'm gonna put 0 0.021. And now I'm gonna to go to that last scale, the vernier scale, and I'm gonna say which line on the vernier scale lines up best with my thimble scale. And in this case, it looks to me like it's the six that lines up the best. So I'm gonna tack a six on here. And so when I add this up, six, one, two, six, so my final answer is gonna be 0.6216 inches. So hopefully now you feel like you can read a micrometer. And if you need to review, you obviously can <clears throat> play this video anytime or ask your instructor for some more practice problems. Have a good day.